you got to come closer. We are live, live. All right, very good. Good afternoon, folks. Hello, it's David and Dana, and we're coming to you in a little bit different format than we have before. This is StreamYard, and we can both come to you at the same time. And um, we're also going to be bringing in um, guests, special guests. Oh, and yes. guests. There we are. And now we're on live. Okay, good. Are we live now? Okay. This <laughs> is like a no, I got to pause that one. Otherwise, it's gonna, I got to mute that one. Yeah. There's a, a delay a little bit because we're using this new program. Okay. Um, but the functionality makes it definitely worth it. So um, we need help from you guys to let us know that you're out there because we are supposed to be able to see your posts in this new program. I just said it. I the said person it. in Facebook. I said it's just a Facebook, but it's not doing it that way. Let me try it here. Let me try it. Here we go. Uh, hello in here and we'll see if we're coming through. Maybe we can just post that way. Okay, let's see here. How are yours, David? A oh, live comment. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. There it is. And then you okay, we're there. I'm gonna invite a few people. Let me see if I can share this with a few groups while I'm at it. In theory. Oh, here it's down here. Sorry. Share. Share with Century 21 Professional Group. We'll share that with Orlando Real Estate Mastermind. Oh, uh, okay. We're there. I'm going to invite a few people. Let me see if I can share this with a few groups. Oh, so well, I'm, I want to do that. Okay, cool. What, what happened to your microphone? It just did a weird thing. Mine? Yeah, it was, I don't know. I, I was inviting, I was, in, I'm inviting some other people to join us that may or may not be able to see it. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool though. Oh, invite. Here, it's down here. I'm going to invite all of our peeps here. Susie Carlton. You're inviting them on. <laughs> On I'm Facebook? inviting them a bunch of different ways just so we can make sure that they see that we're trying to talk to them. And Jody right. Moore, Rustin Davis, Sean Frank, Maria Nunez, Sally Atkins, Barry Miller again, Jessica Lynch, Steve Carlton, Sally. Is anyone else, has anyone else shown up here, you guys, from Facebook? Um, Let us know you're out there. Hello, hello. Lenise. Yay! Yeah, I'm inviting some powerhouse people from outside of our, our actual organization, but there's some really great agents that I have a lot of respect for. So I'm just inviting anybody and everybody to come on in. Although I don't think I can invite the entire five. Oh God. Five Good to see you, or at least yeah. to see your face. Yeah. Um, well, I can't really see your face, but I see your picture. So David, let's get started. Um, so David and I are going to be able to do our C21 in the afternoon together, which is very exciting. Um, so we can kind of play off each other and, um, we are going to bring you information. We're going to bring you some humor, some antidotes, all kinds of stuff. Um, we're going to be here every day at two o'clock and, um, Today, we have a couple of guest stars, um, which is why we're so excited to be able to do this too. We um, have Daryl Clark with The Closing Agent, and we are waiting for Susie Carlton with Element Funding, who's also going to be um, stopping in and, and visiting you guys. Um, so uh, one thing that I did want to just remind everyone out there is uh, tomorrow, all of you independent contractors can um, go to your banks and apply for the PPP um, loan that has some forgivable um, expenses that you can uh, pay on. It's not completely crystal clear to me how what is forgivable for independent contractors but at the worst case scenario you're getting a loan that is a one percent interest loan and it is um you take your income off of your 1099 from last year you figure out 
what a monthly amount, what was a, what a monthly income was for you. And you multiply that by two and a half. The PPP, the whole idea is to give you employment for two and a half months. Um, so that's, that's what, that's what you would do it. And they have opened, this is through the small business administration and they've opened this up to small businesses with employees since last Friday, but now it's open to independent contractors starting tomorrow. So all of you realtors out there, um, please tell me you have at least looked at your bank um, looked online, seen where, how to go in and apply for that tomorrow, because while you may not hear back for them for several days, we applied on, uh, the a company, um, uh, third didn't let us put in the application until Monday. We still haven't heard back from them. I mean, we got the whole thing, like that we got your application, but we haven't heard back, but at least we're in the queue. Um, because people are, I mean, banks are getting thousands millions of applications so you need to be in the queue um we have a few new visitors before you get before you keep rambling on there sorry uh, i've got we've got rusty uh, moore from adt is here one of my favorites uh and we have jared dennison who is up uh, i can't remember the name of his company uh, you're, no. um, you're not seeing, I'm, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but they're here that's why i've got both of them open but uh christine mm -hmm. is here Christine Gabriel, I believe she's with Title, and Jeff Sandin's here, and Scott Hartwell. Y'all yeah. say in the comments if you can. That way we can see them. Our, our platform. Yeah, I can only see you if you're in the comments or you're in here. Okay. So let's start, David, by um, bringing Daryl in and let Daryl say hi to the people. Great. And I'm going to go get my basset hound off the bed because she's stuck. So take me off the screen. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I guess we can remove David. Hey, Daryl, I can't hear you. Wait, wait, maybe you're muted. You're unmuted. Can't unmute your guests because they too, you got to be unmute yourself. I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? I can, hey, everyone. Welcome, Daryl from Daryl Clark from The Closing Agent. Good so, Daryl, where did David go? David went to go deal with the dogs. He'll be oh, back. Okay. Oh, he's back. I'm, I'll add him into this stream. Hey, I'm back. I'm sorry. My, my, I had a hound caught on the bed that she couldn't get down. She's 12, so I heard a howl. I had to respond. It's like it's like when a baby cries. I'm gonna you're, howl. you're a daddy. So, Daryl, are you working from home? Are you working at the office? Where are I'm you? I'm working from my house in College Park, and we are um, – We've been really, really busy. We've talked to you all several times and um, things are going really well. There's a lot of questions out there. We're taking a lot of phone calls every day. Um, so whatever we can do to help, whether it be with um, PPP loan applications, um, helping agents navigate that process as well as navigate safer ways to close has been what we've been really working on for the last few weeks. To elaborate on that, you guys have been kind of the pioneers and from what I've seen in this uh, remote online notary uh, program that you uh, that you rolled out. I know Barry was one of the first people to get that um, up and running. And I, I know people hear about Ron, they, they, they kind of have an idea what it is, but um, this has really, the timing for it could not be better because you guys are doing one for me right now, as a matter of fact, that's not Ron, but it's also a way to do things like a power of attorney. I've got a client that's stuck in Oregon. They're mm -hmm. on their new house and he doesn't want to get on a plane and fly back here for the closing because of the COVID. So can you kind of walk us through that process as well as the Ron process and how that works with your company? Sure. What we really did is we changed the whole paradigm of how um, we were closing. Normally, the top of the pyramid is an in-person closing. So what we switched over to is a new pyramid where a power of attorney is actually the first thing that we're offering to people. If they're saying to us that they're really concerned with leaving their home, we're doing a limited power of attorney for them so that we can either act on their behalf or they assign that power of attorney to someone else, be it their realtor or a trusted friend um, to act on their behalf for that closing. And that's followed by remote online notarization. As we've, as we've all heard, um, there's not a lot of lenders out there that approve a Ron closing. 
So that is an option that's out there, but there is a limited number of lenders that are approving that type of um, online digital end-to-end -end closing. Right. So, so the solution to that is what we're doing, which is with the power of attorney. Right. And that's, that's a um, service that we're offering that will draft a power of attorney um, for our clients. Um, there's no charge for the power of attorney. There is a technology fee paid to the third party provider that's used for the notarial act. We use several different platforms, um, platform providers for that. And the charge does vary by provider and delivery time frame because with everybody right now trying to use those systems, um, there can be some delays with scheduling time to notarize a document. Now, when, I know that uh, one of the things we, Dana and I, have really been enjoying, you guys have been doing some town halls uh, with all the attorneys. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the closing agent, it's actually part of Barry Miller Law. There, um, Barry's been, God, I, Barry, I've known Barry since, since I, I used to rent a house from him way back in the day, which was a Wednesday. Um, back in the day, uh, and you, Daryl, Daryl was one of my clients. He, he came down. Was I one of your first clients, David? Not one of my first ones, probably the most, the one that scared me the most. I will say that. <laughs> Daryl, I mean Daryl's background was at. I'm going to get the name of the hospital wrong. You were an administrator at Boston. It was Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. General, and this was back in the days of Nokia or Nextel. Nextel, and he would he, he would always call me by my last name. I'd, I'd hear this Dorman <laughs> wake me up out of my sleep and. But, you know, we he came down here, we became really good friends, and he decided he was bored because he kind of planned, I think, to retire initially, but this man does not stand still. And he became, uh, I, I heard about an opening at the closing agent, introduced him to Barry, and I will tell you, I'm going to blow you 17 reason. years later, it's all history. 17 years later, you've gone from one tiny little house office to how many, how many offices? Um, now? Five, soon to be seven. Where are the other two? Um, Lakeland and Merritt Island. Wow, branching out. And uh, he's just a very organized person and technology savvy. So he's really taken very, very, he's an amazing attorney, but he's not the most tech savvy person. I think that's a fair statement to make. And Daryl has really made them probably one of the, I, I, no offense to any other title companies that might be out there. You know, I, I, I am a little bit biased. I'm a, biased. I'm a lot biased, but really tech savvy organization and I can't tell you how helpful your your um, guidance on this COVID nineteen. Co co what is it? Nineteen COVID. Yeah. COVID nineteen has been in helping us provide information to our buyers and sellers, knowing what their legal rights are in certain situations, and what more importantly, what they aren't. Because a lot of people assume, oh, it's force majeure. I can do whatever I want. I can cancel the deal. Like. No, you can't, and you're probably going to lose your deposit and, or have other repercussions. So we want to thank you for that. But every, how often are you doing your your town halls that are that are online for the other agents that we know? We're trying to to keep our communication um, really where there's so much communication going on out there right now. To when we have something relevant to to share, um, it was really important to get some information out there about the PPP loan application process. Mm -hmm. and what we do to monitor a lot of the um, sentiment that's out there, we monitor you know, our call volume very closely here. And when this all started a couple of weeks ago, we had, we had more than triple the amount of calls that were coming into our main number during that time. And we've seen that in the last week has started because we feel that people are starting to get into this new um, this new phase, which is um, understanding the different ways that you can close um, and also a new way to work. So we think that people are starting to get into um, a more comfortable space. Um, so we limit those meetings to really on an as need, you know, as need to know basis. We will be doing some more um, training type um, seminars that will be going on and those will be released shortly. Yeah, it's been it's been highly educational uh, and a welcome thing. So even I think with Dana and I, because we have a relationship with you guys, we we were even able to take the documents we thought we were that we were good with, we were creating and have you guys tweak them and bring them back. So it's been great. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to talk about right now. We have some, some other people in the queue as well, and uh, I don't want to. Yeah, if um, you know, if you're. Um, 
listening and you're interested in any of the documentation that we offer or um, any of the flyers that we have on the different ways that um, your customers can close, all of that information is on our website, theclosingagent.com. Um, there's a special realtor um, section um, if you navigate from the main page. And we have all of those forms and documents published for you out there. It's forward slash COVID. Is it COVID? Um, you can go direct to the page, theclosingagent.com forward slash CV, and we'll post it here. But if you just go to our main page, you can also get to their, you know, get to the page for it. Daryl, thank you so much for being here today on very short notice. I literally just told him about like half an hour ago and all of that. And uh, Dana is figuring this new program out very yeah, well. I am. I'm, I'm doing a great, great job. Daryl, I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thank you so right. much. All right. Well, um, uh, David, Lenisi had a couple questions um, about um, about uh, the remote, the digital closings and stuff. So yeah. get her together with Daryl after this. Okay? I will do that. I will do that. All right, so, folks. Our next I'm incredibly uh, impressed today. I've, I've been throwing a lot of technology at her over the past few weeks, you know, starting with Zoom and you know, it all started a few months ago when we got her a Mac and she was like, I don't like Mac. I don't want to do Mac. And now what did you say today? I am forever grateful for our, my for my Mac laptop, for for my whole Mac world. We've Mac'd her out, except we forgot one tiny thing. We got her a Mac mini and there's no camera. So she's, I don't know what you're working. Are you working on your laptop right now? I'm on my laptop. On your laptop. Well, cool, but she does have her special ring that makes her look like she's glowing. I know. I have I have different colors. What do you guys? I need to know a vote. This is natural. This is cool. Oh. And this is warm. Again, natural. I like natural. I, I'm feeling natural today. Naturally, so, anyway. I'm feeling a little more warm, but um, yeah. I'm I'm good with natural right now. And I did want to say, Jerry Dennison works for the agency. It's called the agency, and he's the num he's the realtor for vets. Uh, I've been I kind of you know I'm with Orlando Realtor Mastermind, which is a great group uh, for bouncing ideas off of each other and all that. And I've really made friends with some people outside of our office, which you know is is a really cool thing in and of itself. But Jared's one of those people that's kind of stood out as being a leader and just generally a nice person. So I'm glad to see him on here. Um, and who else is here? Jose Tobar Barades and David Hollenby from The Closing Agent is here. Uh, lots of great people in the stuff from our office. Sean Layton's here from the, home, the uh, Orlando Homeboys. Um, so what else do you guys want to talk about before we bring up our next guest? If you want to throw some questions in the uh, or comments in the uh, live stream, I can zip over here and find that. And uh, we're happy to jump on any of that for you. Um uh, Susie Carlton with Element Funding, who's coming up next, she sent me a video on mortgage for, uh, forbearance. So I am going to play that video while you go and look at some questions, David, and then we can answer your questions in a second. So bear with me, folks, um, but I think I'm going to be able to do this. Let's hope. Oh, wait, I may have done the wrong thing. Get the right screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, it's like, I, I really do need those two things. Okay, oh wait, no. Share screen. Yeah, so you normally have two screens at, their, at a regular office, but then no camera. So you're gonna get it, I have faith. I, I have complete. Yeah. Maria has an SBA question while you're trying to do that. The question is whether or not you can have when you're doing all of that, do you count yourself as an employee or is it zero employees because you are the employee if you're an independent contractor? That I don't have an answer to. I think I would probably go zero with the employees. Can you hear me, David? I, can hear you. I can't. Yeah. Okay. I think I'd go zero with the employees because you really don't have any. They, they know, there is a box at the very beginning where you check off. Well, about it. I mean, if you have zero employees, why would you apply be applying for SBA? No, no, no. If you are that, that hold on. Yeah, meaning that you are the employee. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you are the employee. You know. Okay. What, was it sharing my screen once I did that? I'm a no, little bit confused. Not. I might be able to do it here if you want me to. Okay. I think I think I got it. All right. Oh, 
No, 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 I don't. That's not it. Oh, gee. Okay. Again, we are a little challenged, but that's okay. It's okay. I can see it. Okay. It's okay. You know what? I'm just going to share my entire screen and then I'm going to get it to don't freak out, everyone. And here we go. If you are experiencing difficulty making on-time mortgage payments due to the national coronavirus emergency, forbearance may be an option for you. Forbearance can help consumers get back on their feet during short-term financial difficulty. But there are a few things you need to know and some important decisions you'll need to make. Forbearance is when your mortgage servicer, that's the company that sends your mortgage statement and manages your loan or lender, allows you to pause or reduce your payment for a limited period of time. Forbearance does not erase what you owe. You will have to repay any missed or reduced payments in the future. So if you are able to keep up with your payments, keep making them. Types of forbearance available vary by loan type. If your mortgage is backed by the federal government, this includes FHA, VA, USDA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac loans. Provisions of the recently enacted CARES Act allow you to temporarily suspend payments if you are experiencing financial difficulty due to the impact of the coronavirus on your finances. Loan servicers may also have forbearance or deferment options for non-government backed or private loans but the exact options available in Freddie Mac loans. Provisions of the recently enacted CARES Act allow you to temporarily suspend payment. If you are experiencing financial hardship due to the coronavirus pandemic, well, phone. Regardless of the type of mortgage you have better? or how you communicate with your servicer, <laughs> oh here are God. some things to consider. If you cannot make your mortgage payments and you are looking to suspend or reduce your payments, you will need to work with your servicer. If you decide to move forward with a forbearance plan, ask your servicer how you will be required to pay back the amount owed after the forbearance period. Will you owe the entire unpaid amount in a lump sum once the pause period has ended or at the end of the loan term? Can the loan term be extended so that missed payments are added to the end of your mortgage? Will your subsequent monthly payments be higher for a period of time to make up the deferred amount? Finally, be on the lookout for scams and scammers looking to take advantage of consumers affected by coronavirus. You might receive fraudulent calls, emails, text messages, or other offers to help you reduce or stop your mortgage payments. Make sure you are working directly with your mortgage servicer. For more in-depth information, including information on how to find a HUD approved housing counselor, go to consumerfinance.gov slash coronavirus. Now I'm not. Uh, Dana, that was great. Especially the part where all my text messages appeared on the screen. Um, okay, we've lost Dana apparently. Now I'm the only one live. I have nothing to talk about. Uh, I think we're trying to get Susie back on the screen here. Um, the link to the forbearance video, Bruce, we will make sure we email that to all of you. Um, and as I, I know, I got a couple questions here. So until uh, we get the rest of our video back, 
I got from Jared Dennison here. The programs you're talking about are still loans, correct? Albeit low interest. They just meant to provide for potential lost income. Yes. Uh, Dana knows a little bit more about this than I do. The interest rate's only 1%. There she is. What did you do? I don't even know. I'm like, David, oh, David, 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 I gotta, we've got to get the camera so I can have my two screens. I will get you a camera. Not working without I have a camera. Screen. Amazon right now. Actually, I'm not, but I will be shortly because I don't know which kind to get. But anyway, Jared had a question about the programs for uh, the, the, the loan programs. Um, they yeah, but, so. pay back. It does have to be paid back, but there are ways to not pay back all of it is what my understanding. Is that correct? Well, it's, yeah. So we had originally been told like a week and a half ago that that $10,000 dollars that EIDL loan wasn't really a loan, um, that you weren't going to have to pay it back, that that was going to be kind of like a 10000 right into your bank account. Well, that has kind of really changed. And we don't believe, and, and we had all of our agents to go right to that SBA.gov and apply for that $10,000 loan. Um, we may still be seeing some money coming from that. Um, but it, it looks to be maybe only a thousand dollars per employee. So we, or, you know, you're an independent contractor. You went and applied for that loan. You may only be getting a thousand dollars. Now it's important. The reason I start with that is because that is a portion of the PPP loan application. But as I understand it, it asks you for how much money that you've already gotten from the EIDL. Um, I kind of get this feeling if you get the PPP loan, you have to pay back all the EIDL money, which was just that $10,000. It's freaking letters to me. It's going in one ear and out. The other. I know. I know. But the key to independent contractors, um, you know, those of you who earn your living selling real estate, what you need to do is basically figure out, I think you just take your 1099 from last year, divide it by 12, multiply it by 2.5 months, and that is the amount that you are going to be able to get a loan for through the PPP. Now, it's not clear to us exactly which of those, uh, what, you can use that money for to where the the loan would be forgiven but at the worst case scenario it's a one percent loan that you don't have to start paying back for six months so get the money and then we can figure out what part you might not have to pay back in in the future but you guys we don't know how long this is going to last. We know that real estate is going to come back and come back with a vengeance, but whether that happens in June, July or more October, November is really kind of up in the air. And so, um, you know, we as independent contractors can't live for three months without anything coming in and we can't get unemployment. So, um, you know, get on, get with your bank and find out how to apply for that PPP tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. All right, any more questions before we bring Susie on? All right, Susie, uh, before you bring her on, Susie Carlson is with Element Funding. I met Susie, gosh, I've known her forever too. Um, probably one of my favorite, well, not probably, she, well, no offense to our, our partners, but Susie personally is, uh, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world outside of, of real estate as well. Uh, one of those people that- you can see her smile yeah. as David's talking about her. Hey, Susie. Hi. Susie's one of those people that down to problems, she's not reactive as much as just, she just takes care of it. And she's, she's probably has some of the best follow-up of anybody I know. And uh, in return for that, I, I help her by being, helping her be, become tech savvy. <laughs> yes. She used to have one of those old paper things for the longest time. And now she's down to an iPhone and an iPad. And she still does things on paper like I do. I, I use paper in my office. But uh, but anyway, um, we do a lot of work together. And she's going to talk to us today a little bit. I don't even know what we're talking about today. <laughs> talking about. 
Well, I can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I had a few topics that I thought might interest um, people, um, considering the environment we're in right now. Um, one of the first is I, I know there's a, um, a lot of misinformation about there, out there about mortgage rates when the Fed cuts rates. So yeah. um, we'll back up to a few weeks ago when we got word that the Fed was cutting the interest rate to zero. Um, I had a lot of phone calls and emails for people wanting to refinance their mortgage to a 0% rate. Um, the, the Fed cut is the federal funds rate. It's not mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are basically um, priced based on the bond market. So it's really more a reaction of how the markets perform when something like a Fed rate cut happens. So in early March, you all may remember interest rates, mortgage interest rates were extremely low. So we had a huge influx. Um, my company, I was on a call yesterday, they took over $900 million in refinance loans the first week of March. Um, that flooded the markets and caused capacity issues for lenders. So we had to kind of halt that. Plus the markets went into a bit of turmoil because the coronavirus hit the U.S much stronger. So just to let you all know, rates have been affected. Um, they did go up a little bit over the last few weeks. They're starting to settle back down again. But when the Fed cuts the rate, it's not the market. Excellent. So that was one. So, so what do you um, foresee in terms of um, the rates fluctuating as we, you know, get through the quarantine and as we come out of the quarantine, of course, you know, complete disclosure, we <laughs> only have our own little crystal balls that, you know, don't, we have no liability to them, but I'm sure you, you know, just like we have a feeling on what's going to happen real estate wise, what are you thinking is going to happen um, rate wise and and also just with people who've been on furlough and, um, you know, because usually we're looking at two years of employment and right. we're not going to have a lot of people aren't going to have two years of uninterrupted employment. Yeah. And that's a good point. Um, you know, I think the markets are starting to get a little more stable again. Um, we're seeing uh, the bond markets up today. The stock market's been doing a little better the last few days. We think housing is going to come out extremely strong. Our company um, predicts that once we get through this, we're going to see it soar. So now is a great time for people to buy if they can, because I think maybe now they could get a little bit better deal. But the reality is we have to make sure that they have solid employment. And um, David and I just experienced this personally with a client. Um, it's very sad, especially in the Orlando market. We have a lot of theme park employees that are on furlough right now. Um, a lot of businesses are closed and as lenders, we have to be able to verify three days prior to closing that they are still solidly employed and earning their income. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. I mean, we, we, we just we thought we were right where we needed to be. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just all of a sudden it just it, it just collapsed. So. Yeah. And I will tell you, we're taking steps. We're getting a little. Um, with, with some borrowers, we're finding um, if there's more than one um, person buying the home and one of them loses their job, we try to restructure <laughs> quickly and make see if the one borrower alone will qualify. Um, with David's and my client, we couldn't unfortunately make that work. But in a lot of cases, we are working through those. But to your point, Dana, um, it's going to be a little challenging for hourly employees when this all ends to um, possibly buy right away because we do have to average their income over a couple of years. But people that are back on a salaried position, um, I don't expect we'll have, um, you know, I think we'll be able to work with them pretty quickly. So do you think that with the loan approval guidelines and all of that, do you think, has there been any talk about understanding that with when it comes to underwriting and all that, they're going to show this this big gap of mm -hmm. missing of missing income? What have you heard anything about that and how they plan on ad addressing that? Not yet. You know, every day um, we learn something new. There's a lot of information coming out every day. Um, my thought is that it will affect the hourly employees more um, yeah. because they're going to have a they're going to have a year to date income 
you know, much lower. And we'll probably have to qualify them with that. And assuming, you know, they qualify, then they're fine. But if, you know, if it's too low, then they may have to wait a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. We've heard from a lot of people about what, what they're calling the surge is going mm -hmm. to happen. And uh, yeah. so. Uh, we expect that. And what, what we're recommending from the surge is that Jared had a great quote yeah. today. The <laughs> move my head. <laughs> oh, Nana, move up. You're like, you're, there you go. Or, put, we need to get you a telephone book or something. There you go. <laughs> <Better. laughs> see, our three of our heads are lined up now. You were like, you're like, <laughs> I'm talking to my mom today. <laughs> Hi. Hi. The surge, what, what what a lot of people are recommending you do, and I think we talked, we touched on this yesterday, but I'm gonna, I was listening to that Jared Jones, James, uh, Jared Jones. Mm -hmm. Isn't Jared Jones the guy that did that really bad, drank the Kool-Aid down, was that Jared James? Do you remember? Okay, Jared James is the, the guy uh, no, no. Don't, don't compare him to some weird Kool-Aid person. <laughs> <laughs> remember the Kool-Aid guy that where they drank all the Kool-Aid to go to heaven or whatever? What was that? Do you remember that? Somebody remembers it. <laughs> James, that was a bad trip you had, David. Bad trip. This is this is just water. Um, the whole idea is of while we have this downtime, he said that the the fishermen when they can't go out and fishing because the tide's too low, what do they do? They work on their nets, and that's what we're doing now. I mean, mm -hmm. every day I get on this computer and I just start. I reach out to people, and I keep reaching out. And another thing he likes to say is, you have. You, you want to get one of two fingers. So it's either this one or I won't do that one because that's inappropriate. <laughs> and I would never do anything inappropriate. But anyway, um, so any uh, su suggestions on what people should be doing right now? Is there anything credit wise that if they had to make a choice between paying this or that, is there anything that you can think of, Susie, that makes sense? Well, yeah, go ahead, Dane. I was just saying that was a good question. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I talked to, uh, for instance, the the borrowers that David and I had, the buyers that, you know, they, they want to buy. So when they get through this, you know, my thing was just, tr you know, it's hard because everybody's um, paychecks have been affected, but you don't want to go up and charge up all your revolving debt. If you do that, um, you're going to have your credit scores impacted. Um, the best kind of credit is when you keep your um, credit card debt under 30% of your limits. So if it means spreading out the debt over several cards um, versus charging one up, you know, to the max, um, that's going to impact scores. The other thing we don't know is how this forbearance is going to impact. Um, we saw back in 2007, 2008, when people were doing mortgage modifications and things, it did impact their credit. They're being told by their servicers it won't, but if they get to the point where they can't make the lump sum payment and it's gonna be spread out, that may report as derogatory and we don't know. So um, if you don't have to go into forbearance and you can make your payments, I would recommend you do that. Awesome, that's great information. You know, it's just so, it's so, it's so hard to stop and even you know, think about, do I choose between this, this, I got to eat, I got to do this, like the mm -hmm. kid, whatever it might be, whatever. It's just, you don't know where to start or. You know. No. Again, David, that's why we just keep on hammering to everyone, all of our agents. Even if you guys only made $20,000 last year, you can still get some money to help pay for food, for the you know to help pay for your rent for your mortgage um you know the to, i know it's frustrating and it's confusing but we you know we're here to help there's tons of people to help and you guys just you've got to get with your bank and be able to put in that application for the ppp loan yeah. because you don't want to be charging things on your credit card that you're going to pay 20, 25% interest on. This is a 1% interest loan. This is a far better way to go. Yeah, definitely. Susie, anything else before we let you go? Um, no, one um, thing I wanted to address real quick to Daryl, um, to Daryl's comments about the, um, them uh, being the uh, notary for clients. Um, we did get, um, actually, I got an email yesterday. I had it pulled up um, that, unfortunately, a lot of the secondary market investors that buy loans, they're not allowing it. 
So um, if you do, um, if you do want to go that route, you need to get with your, your mortgage loan officer and let them confirm who the loan's locked with. And if that's going to be allowed, um, because we understand people want to stay safe, but there have been other ways they're trying to work out closings. Some are they do a mail away of all the documents, except for the docs that need notarized. And then if they're local, they may have to go um, and just notarize those couple of documents. Um, but um, there's still some challenges with that I wanted to mention. And it's not so much with us as with the secondary market who buys these loans. Thank you. All right. I'm not, David, are you seeing any other questions? Uh, I lost my screen. Hold on one second. Um, it's over here. Can we do both 10K and PP? Can you do both what? 10K and PPP. Um, you can apply for both of them. Yes. In fact, the PPP is going to ask you how much you've gotten from the the 10,000 is called the EIDL. Um, you know, I, I really don't foresee you getting the $10,000 from the um, EIDL, but, you know, more power to you. Has anyone actually gotten any money in their bank account from that? Daryl mentioned that they, he applied for the uh, their companies, you know, Barry Miller Law, Frozen Agent, and one other one. The PPP. Uh, yeah, and he was expecting something very soon. So if anybody knows how to do it, it's that man. He's very organized. And uh, so we'll, if, if he gets it, then we'll follow his lead and see. I know we've applied for it for the company to cover our employees, you know, and it's just, it's a lot. It's scary. It's over. It's, it's just like you feel like, you're banging your head against the wall some days, but I'm hopeful that it, they get their, the kinks worked out. It was kind of like the same same situation when we started uh, Obamacare, you know, the Affordable Care Act, when they launched those that program right. and it right. crashed. And it was as organized as people try, the government tries to be with so many people, there's just, they're going to be hiccups. And all I can tell you is that you got to remain patient if you can do it try doing it really, really late at night or early, early, super duper early in the morning, like two or three in the morning, it tends to be less of a strain on the system. Uh, and, and I mean, we've done it personally with our company, David. We, uh, Greg did it through like our personal bankers. So if you have a relationship with anyone, like yeah. an actual person there, um, that, you know, call them up today and just kind of, you know, yeah, find out. Care. They're not going to let you in, but uh, what? Just, do not go down there because they won't let you in. But yeah, no. definitely. awesome. Well, Susie, uh, uh, let me give Susie a quick plug. You can reach <laughs> me at, uh, I'll put her information in the chat. Uh, Susie Carlton of Element Funding for all Thank of you. the needs. And, uh, and uh, we will talk to you very soon. Sounds great, guys. Have a great day. Bye, dear. Bye. Bye. Yeah, All right, David. Mastering it. I think we're good for today. It's been 40 minutes. I'm getting there. I, I, I definitely need the double screen so so I can do it. But I think right. for our first one, it went pretty I, well. I sent you an Amazon link. Just order that because I was going to order it, but then I realized I had other things on it, on my order as well. And I don't want my grill parts to go to your house. So Yeah, no. Mm -mm. All right. Well, sweet Michelle just says, if there's anyone out there that is not able to purchase food, um, Due to not having a paycheck, I am here to help. That is so sweet. I love our agents. Um, and thank you guys. Thanks to everyone who's here on Facebook and our guests. And we will be back tomorrow at 2 at C21 in the afternoon. So you make that a thing, aren't you? She's well, like, yeah. I, I told Baylor, I'm going to be. She's going to go print. I need a logo. I know. Look famous. I, this is, you know, for those of you who don't know, I couldn't get to do any of this weeks ago. Now all of a sudden, she's like, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, you really want to do that every day? Oh, yeah. You just have to take people day. away from me. You had to take yeah, people away from me. Good. Good. Now yeah. I can connect. Well, we did, we, yesterday we did Quiplash on the uh, thing. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. So, all right, yeah. guys. If it was yesterday. Anything. Yeah, it was yesterday. I am my days. If you need anything, we are just a phone call away. We are more than happy to take those calls. We love you and we are here for you. So I'm going to say goodbye to all our family. 
M-I-C-K. No, that's not right. All right, babe. Bye. Bye.